Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and let us give honor unto him. Amen. I am Pastor Calvin Mills of the Church of God Holiness in Bogus Bay. I'm I am delighted to share this moment with you on JTV, the wonderful word of Almighty God. We appreciate this open door of opportunity to come before you again to share God's wonderful word. Feel free at any time to pay us a visit. Amen. We have sunrise service at 7 in the morning, Sunday school at 10 on Sunday, and a second morning worship at 11. You can visit us for Sunday evening Bible study, 6.30 p.m. Amen. But I'm just delighted to share this wonderful moment with you in God's wonderful word. Hallelujah. And if you're following with me today, amen, today's lesson comes to us from the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation chapter number 3. People often ask me uh, why people are not preaching from Revelation. Well, I guess if we are not inspired, we are not wired. But I'm wired and inspired to share with you from the book of Revelation today. Amen. A young lady of thoughtful tone of mind once said to the late Dr. Jewett, master of Balial, Doctor, what do you think of God? For a while, the doctor was silent. And then with great solemnity, the doctor replied, My dear, it is not what I think of God, but what does God think of me? Amen. Have you ever pondered those words? What does God think of me? Someone who was the richest American in his day was in his last fatal sickness. A Christian friend proposed to sing to him, and the hymn he named was, Come ye sinners, poor and needy. Yes, yes, replied the dying millionaire, Sing that to me, I feel poor and needy. The question is, what is Jesus saying to those who are proud of their earthly riches, but bankrupt in their souls? What is he saying to us? Let us visit the words in Revelation chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Amen. And the central text I felt inspired to share with you are found in the phrase, By of me. Many of us like to shop, like to purchase goods. Let me ask you the question, where are you shopping? From whom are you buying? And are you buying that which you are really in need of? Searching questions, muse on them as I share some music from God's word with you. Father, we thank you for your holy word. We pray as we break the bread of life to your people who are tuned in. We pray, O oh God, that eyes will be open, hearts will be stirred, and lives will be transformed. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is saying, buy of me. I want to share with you the merchant. Amen. The merchant in this passage of scripture, amen, of course, a merchant is a, the seller of commodities or goods. Who is the merchant who is saying, buy of me? Who is he? He is the amen, according to the 14th verse of Revelation chapter 3. Amen. He is the amen, the true one. He is the trustworthy one. Well, that's somebody to buy from. Someone who is true. Someone who is trustworthy. 
They're not going to play any games with you. They're not going to play trick or treat with you. They will not deceive you to get what they want from you rather than you getting what you need from them. He says, buy of me, the true one, the trustworthy one, who is the merchant. Amen. He is the faithful and true witness. He is the faithful and true witness. He sees with his own eyes that which he tells. Amen. He don't hear gossip and run with it. He knows the facts and he relays or retells the facts. Amen. He repeats with accuracy that which he has heard and seen. So my friend, the merchant in this case is one who is absolutely honest. His words are trustworthy and they are fully reliable. Now that's the kind of person I want to do business with. Somebody whose words are trustworthy, somebody who is fully reliable. Amen. Their words are fully reliable. You can depend upon them that they're going to be real with you. They're going to be honest with you. They're going to be upfront with you. And my friend, they're not rooting to just make a buck from you. But they are rooting to get you what you need for your life. To experience transformation in your life. Amen. The amen is saying, buy of me. The faithful and true witness is saying, buy of me. Amen. Who is saying, buy of me? He's the beginning of God's creation. That means he is the source of God's creation. The Apostle Paul said in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, by him were all things created. Amen. It was by the agency of this merchant that I'm bringing before you today that the world was created. Amen. So he knows who's in it and he knows what's in it and he knows what is in whoever dwells within the world. Who is saying by of me? Amen. The one who knows us inside out. According to the message Bible of verse 15, this merchant is saying by of me because he knows us inside out, he has a proper diagnosis of our situation. He knows just what we are in need of. Amen. He's not the person who is playing a guess game. Who is wondering if it is this or if it is that. He's the person that knows the root of the problem. Amen. He's not one that settles for treating symptoms. He's one that gets to the root of the problem. And since he knows your need, he has the remedy for your need. No wonder he is saying, buy of me. Hallelujah. Now you and I know then, we have a, the most qualified merchant with whom we can do business. He is saying, buy of me. By now, you know I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Yes, he's God's businessman. Think about that. And he's the best person with which you and I can do business. But oftentimes, we buy of everyone else. And we buy everything from all over the place. But we fail to shop, amen, at the right merchant's man. Think about that. Oh my God, may he help us today. Now I've unfolded to you the merchant. Let me share secondly with you the merchant's market. The merchant's market. Amen. Every merchant, amen, has a targeted market for his merchandise. Someone said the secret to success in life is to find a problem and solve it or find a need and fill it Yea, even find a hurt and heal it. We are often paid for solving problems. Think about that. Amen. So when we have a product, we have a targeted market. A particular people who are in need of our product. It reminds me of the shoe factory, amen, that uh, produced shoes and sent a salesman to Africa. And it is said the salesman went and was amazed that 
nobody in Africa wear shoes. And upon discovering wherever he went, everyone was shoeless and he seems clueless. Lord have mercy. <laughs> and he returned back to his company and said, nobody in Africa wear shoes. Oh, my friend, I'm glad that the manufacturer did not give up, but he sent another salesman. Oh, my. And upon arrival and upon observation of the people in Africa, the report came back to the home base saying, get all the shoes you have, get, the, get them packaged, get them ready to be shipped over here because everybody in Africa needs shoes. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, my friend, the merchant who is speaking today and who is saying to you and I, buy of me, he knows that which we all are in need of. Now there's some markets target just a few. But my merchant that I am representing today, he is targeting all of us. For all of us are in need of his merchandise. And he is saying, buy of me. The merchant's market in this context of scripture in which we are speaking from Revelation chapter 3, is the church of the Laodiceans. Amen. The city of Laodicea was the wealthiest in Phrygia during Roman times, according to the NIV Study Bible. It was a great banking and financial center. It was a great center of clothing manufacturing. Amen. It was also a great medical center. Laodicea was famous for its black clothing. It was famous for its ear and eye salve. Somebody say one application. Amen. That I will see as it was meant to see. Wow, that's powerful. Think about that. The church at Laodicea, though, was arrogant. Do you know anybody who's arrogant? Well, before you check out, check in, see if you are arrogant. Yeah, they were arrogant. They were self-conceited. In other words, they had an excessively high opinion of themselves. And if most of us will really check up, before we check out, we will find out that we have an excessive high opinion of ourselves. The Bible talks about those who think too highly of themselves. The reality of the matter is scripture exhorts us to have a sane estimate of ourselves. Now, there are some of us who think too highly, and on the other hand, some who think too lowly. And I know it's safer to think lowly than highly, but we need a sane estimate of ourselves. These people at Laodicea, they were arrogant. They were not only arrogant and self-conceited, they were arrogant and self-sufficient. What do you mean by that? They said, I am rich. We are rich. We are increased with good. We have need of nothing. We have everything we want. And we don't need one single thing. So they thought. My friend, a lot of us are really blinded to our real need. Yes, we are so preoccupied with our wants, that our needs have gone out of sight. <laughs> really not because the needs have disappeared, but the sight have disappeared from beholding the needs. So we act like we are in need of nothing. And there's a lot of folks that as long as they have money and cars and houses, we act like we are self-sufficient. We don't need God. People think you only need God when you're broke. I got some news coming down the pipeline for you today. A lot of us who think we ain't broke, we are. <laughs> A lot of us who think we are rich, we are poor. Listen to me speak the word of God under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. They were self-sufficient. There are very few with the spirit of the Apostle Paul today who said that not that we are sufficient of ourselves, speaking about him and his colleagues, he said, but our sufficiency is of God. God is the one who makes us sufficient for life, sufficient for godliness, sufficient for ministry, sufficient for industry. 
our sufficiency is of God. The church at Laodicea, they were arrogant. No doubt, my friend, there are people right in our territory who can identify with the Laodiceans. We are an arrogant people because we are rich and increased with goods. And we act like we don't need anything. We act like we don't need anyone. And included in the anyone is God. I know you don't want me to say it. But when you got money, you ain't thinking about God. When you got health and wealth, you ain't thinking about God. Until you get broke, busted, and disgusted, some of us don't even think to look up. I don't mean to trash you. I just mean to bring you an awakening in your soul that you'll wake up to reality. That, my friend, we are insufficient of ourselves to live the life that God expects us to live. Our sufficiency is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. The church at Laodicea was not only arrogant, but the church was also ignorant. Oh my. Yeah. Jesus said, knowest not that thou art wretched, thou art poor, thou art blind, thou art naked, thou art miserable. Oh, they thought they were having a time. They thought they had all that they were in need of. But Jesus said, knowest not. And a lot of us really don't know that we are pining away on the inside. A lot of us really don't know that we are so sick of sin that except the merchant man comes our way, we'll die in our sins. Are you hearing me? Uh-huh. They were ignorant. Now, there are some of us who are ignorant, and we know we are ignorant. <laughs> On the other hand, there are some of us who think we know it all, and the truth is we really don't know it at all. Oh, God. There are some who know not, and they know that they know not. There are some who know not, and they don't know that they don't know. Oh, that is serious. Are you hearing me? Now, these people who thought they knew, but didn't know that they didn't know, they were in a bad shape. And there are a lot of us who think we know it all, but we don't know it, we don't know it at all. We are in a serious, deplorable condition. And except for an awakening visit from the merchant man, the Lord Jesus Christ, we will die thinking we knew it. And we'll wake up on the other side of eternity finding out, Lord have mercy, how far from the truth we were. Am I talking to you today? Jesus said, you don't realize that you are miserable. You are pitiful. You are poor. You are blind. You are naked. You are poverty stricken. The Bible said in the Beatitudes, blessed are those who are poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It can be retranslated, blessed are those who know their poverty of spirit since the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Yeah, you're probably rich in the pocket. Are you rich in the spirit? You got money in the bank. Do you have spiritual currency in your soul? These are the questions we should be asking ourselves. Uh, the tragedy, says William Barclay of the Laodiceans, was that they were convinced of their own wealth, but they were blind to their own poverty. Convinced of their own wealth, but blind to their own poverty. Does that speak of you? Yeah, you got houses on the hill. You got cars, Lexuses and BMWs, Corvettes and you name them. Money in the bank. You got all the relationships, more than you could handle. You think you're doing great. What about your poverty? No matter how rich you are materially, material rich does not riches does not translate into spiritual riches. And if most of us will check our spiritual account, we've been bankrupt a long time ago. And I preached last time I was with you, amen, in the parable of the the creditor and the two debtors, and, you know, one was in debt ten times worse than the other, but the fact is both of them were in debt, and none couldn't pay. <laughs> and all of us may not have the same spiritual indebtedness, but all of us are in the same spiritual dilemma. If we don't know God through Jesus Christ, we are spiritually bankrupt, or our accounts is in the reds, in the negative, and we need a bailout. 
And the bailout can only come from somebody who will do business with us, really on terms that are extraordinary. That's why the merchant man Jesus is saying, buy of me. Interestingly, the things in which the Laodiceans prided themselves indicated the areas in which they were spiritually poor. They prided themselves on their material riches, but they were spiritually poverty-stricken. Jesus said, you are poor, you're blind, you're naked. They prided themselves in their famous luxurious clothing, but they were spiritually unclothed and naked. Now, the question is that some people show up to church in suits and ties. Some ladies dressed to impress. The hair is well done. The shoes are well high. And the dress is glittering with glamour. But in the sight of the merchant man, they are naked. Oh, Lord. Many of us show up with some robes of righteousness. But they are our own concoction of righteousness. And as far as Jesus is concerned, we are naked. Oh, Lord, help me today. They prided themselves in their famous medical eye salve, yet they were blinded to their true spiritual condition. They were blinded to the fact that they were spiritually poverty-stricken and they were shamefully stripping naked. How could that have happened? Oh, my friend, the very thing that they brag about was indicative of their spiritual poverty. Are we bragging about money, but we are broke spiritually? Are we bragging about our garments on the exterior, but on the interior we are unclothed and naked? Are we bragging about our vision, and we got vision for economics, but we are spiritually blind? Oh, my friends, I know these are some solemn questions, but they are questions that are waking us to the reality of the soul. That we will do business with the divine merchant man. Amen. That we'll be no more poor, but rich. No more blind, but seeing. No more naked, but clothed. He's saying, buy of me. Let me go thirdly to the merchant's merchandise. If a merchant man is saying, buy of me, he got to have some stuff. And he better have good stuff. Because I know that some of you say, plain up, I want quality. I don't care about quantity. And I know some of us are very proud and we don't want what other people does wear. We don't want what nobody got on. Let me talk our language. But the reality is, my people, even though others wear it, you need it. Amen. All of us need what the merchandise that are in this merchant's uh, marketplace. We need his merchandise. We cannot do without them. He says, buy of me. Since you are poor, since you are poverty stricken, you are reduced to a beggar man. You are blind. You can't even see and you're in bad shape. And except you buy of me, you're going to die in your poverty. We need to check him out. How many of you like to go shopping? You're in the right place at the right time. Even though it's Sunday and some stores mark closed, this one mark open. <laughs> it's open for business seven days a week. It's open for business 24 hours. So whether you're seeing at seven in the morning, at midnight hour, at night, the truth is this shop is open for business. And the merchant is saying, buy of me. He said, buy of me refined gold or gold tried in the fire. Now they're bragging about their money and their wealth, but he said, your need of gold tried in the fire. This represents genuine faith in God through Jesus Christ. Now all of us claim, a lot of us are religious and we claim that we have faith in God, but we really don't have genuine faith. I'm not the accuser of the brethren. I didn't come here to judge any congregation in Tortola, in the Virgin Islands, or around the world who is seeing this broadcast, but I'm saying not every one of us who claim to be spiritually rich are rich. Some of us are the opposite. We are poor. Our faith is not genuine. My, my, my. Buy of me gold tried in the fire. Yes, faith tried in the fire of affliction is much more precious than gold, according to 1 Peter 1, 7. Yes, yes, yes. Job said, he knows that when I am tried, I shall come forth as pure gold. If Jesus will try you today, what kind of currency do you have? 
Is it refined? Is it purged in the fire? Is it purified gold? Think about it. The Apostle James asked the question. Didn't God chose the poor people in the world to become rich in faith and to receive the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? He asked that in James chapter 2 verse 5. God don't chose the rich because the rich in the world often don't act like they need God. But those who recognize their poverty, not only their material poverty, but their spiritual poverty, God enjoys revealing himself to them. That's why it's imperative that you now take a look on the inside, ask God to anoint your eyes that you might see yourself as you really are. For a lot of us thinking good about us, when God is seeing nothing good. And if God ain't seeing the blood on your life, there is none good no, not one. If God ain't seen the righteousness of Christ, there is none clothed. No, not one. If God ain't seen the spiritual I serve of the word and the spirit upon your life, you, you can't see. Are you hearing me? Yes, refined gold represents the riches of God's wisdom and grace stored up in Jesus Christ. He's the full package. The Bible says God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. God has given them to us in the man call Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me in the church? Are you hearing me in the community today? He said, not only buy of me refined gold, he said, buy of me white raiment or white clothing. La Odyssey was famous for its black garment made out of black wool. Think about that. Now it was said that their garment was a type of darkness, darkness of ignorance and darkness of sin. Remember Jesus, I told you all that they were arrogant and they were ignorant. So the garment that they were proud of represent that which they should have been ashamed of. Some of us are proud of our sins. We are proud of our sins and our trickery and our deceit. But it's time, my friend, that that pride melt and that pride be pine away. It's, a, it's time that we level it to the ground and we feel ashamed for our sin and our ungodliness. Are you hearing me? Jesus is merchandising white clothing which represents purity and righteousness. That's what white clothing represents. Purity and righteousness in Revelation 19 and the 8th verse, it says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The songwriter said, not our own righteousness, but Christ within living and reigning and saving from sin. Hallelujah. Our righteousness, our own righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of God. We must lay them down and take on the righteousness of Christ, which is by faith. He also says, by of me, I salve. Amen. It represents the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. And the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit and the word of God. Yes, it also speaks of that spiritual anointing by which spiritual vision is purged. And sin has a blinding effect on our lives. Yes, it might be like diabetes. One of the consequences of diabetes over the long haul is that the sight slowly ebbs away until it's no more. There are some spiritual diabetics watching me right now when you're blind. And you can't see. And, and it's a miserable thing to be blind. Oh, my. When we could see where we're going and we could see the glory of nature, the beauty of the sea and the clouds and, and, and the color from the sunshine. Oh, ah, it brings pleasure to our heart. But when we are blind and we are shut out from the glory around us, it leaves us sometimes feeling miserable. Jesus said, buy of me, I serve. Let me drive it home and share with you the merchant's merciful counsel. He said, I counsel thee, buy of me. Do business with me. Purchase my goods. Transact with me. Amen. Now, this is not really talking about going to Banco Popular and withdrawing some money to buy these things I'm talking about. Are, amen. You can't buy them with silver and gold. Amen. You have to come like the man who said, amen, like the apostles said, silver and gold have I none. 
None of us don't have enough to purchase these garments that we need for our soul's well-being. Are you hearing me? But we must pay a price by renouncing sin, renouncing Satan, repenting of sin, and returning to the Lord knowing that he will abundantly pardon. We must be willing to pay the price to suffer for identifying with Jesus Christ and be willing to suffer for his name's sake. The advice, my friend, is to get rid of your spiritual conceit by appropriating the spiritual anointing by which your spiritual vision is purged. Buy medicine for your eyes, for me, so you can see, really see. A lot of us who think we are seeing, we are not seeing. And we need the eye salve that comes from Jesus Christ to open our eyes. It is said the beginning of all true amendment is to see ourselves as we are, not as we think. Think we are. The Bible said, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Are you taking inventory of your soul? When last have you had a checkup? May God speak to our hearts today. My friend, by the rebuke of Christ, we are compelled to see the errors of the way our ways. Jesus said in verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke. Hallelujah. The advice of the merchant Jesus Christ is to renounce your self-sufficiency and recognize your poverty of spirit. He wants to entrust to you true riches, riches that will last. Some of us only have riches for a short while that we will leave here and they will perish or somebody will use them and abuse them. My friend, but you can be wealthy in God. You can be rich in grace. You can be rich in faith. You can be rich in love. You can be rich in power. You can be rich in glory. You can be rich in peace. You can be rich in joy. These things will last throughout the countless ages of eternity. He said, I want you to be truly wealthy. True wealth is spiritual. True wealth is wealth in the inner man. True wealth is more than gold and silver. And it comes from the merchant man, Jesus Christ. He says, buy of me. The merchant's advice is to part with your self-righteousness and be clothed with the righteousness symbolized by white raiment. That's the righteousness of Christ. A right standing with God through Jesus Christ. Put away your garment stained with sin. Put away your garment stamped with ignorance. And put on the white garment of righteousness and truth. The merchant man is saying, buy of me. Let me tell you something as I close. If you have faith, you can buy. If you have humility, you can buy. Amen. You can buy. You can buy right now by acknowledging that you are a sinner no matter how materially rich you are. No matter how healthy you are in body, if you are a sinner, you're not healthy in your soul. The disease of sin will take you to a grave called hell. And certainly you don't want to go there. The merchant man is saying to you, buy of me. Have you seen yourself in today's message? Have you stopped looking around at others? Did you look at yourself? Do you need these merchants that I'm talking about, these merchandise? If you need them, Jesus said, buy of me. But he's telling you, come without money, come without price, and by faith, accept them. I have them available for you. Hallelujah. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for speaking to every heart who have listened to this word. I pray that we have humbled ourselves. You have anointed our eyes that we could see ourselves as we stand with you. And we stand in need of the grace of God. We stand in need of the blood of Christ. We stand in need of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We dethrone our own righteousness. Oh God, we put aside our own trust in our own wealth. Now we trust in the wealth of God's grace through Jesus Christ. Open our eyes through the word and through the Holy Spirit. And help us to see ourselves, not only as we are now, but as we are becoming, as we receive the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Looking forward to hearing from you. And to give you some numbers to call, 494-1344 or 494-1755. You can contact us by email, C-O-G-H bb at gmail.com. We look forward to corresponding with you, encouraging you the best way we can. I trust you've shopped today, not out of your pocketbook, but out of your heart. Amen. You've shopped, you know, clothe and look at you. Amen. Clothe in Christ's righteousness. Look at you. Your eyes are open. You can see. 
Oh, look at you. You were once just a while ago poor, but he's pouring in his riches on you. Rejoice and be exceeding glad and talk to us. Be sure to thank JTV for allowing me this window of opportunity to share in God's word with you. So until I come your way again, remember to stay exposed to the truth. It will set you free. Bye-bye.